Excellent. Okay. My name is Jason Etter. I'm the Vice President of Client Services at Profound Cloud. Joining me today is Michael Spadaro, CEO of Profound Cloud. And what we're going to do today is talk about an interesting challenge, which is choosing a CRM and or a project management solution for your business. In many cases, uh, organizations aren't entirely certain if that's what they're looking for. They might have needs that overlap, uh, where some needs might go into what would uh, follow into a CRM, and others would go into a project management solution. We're going to talk about what we find are the best practices in determining what you need, along with providing some insight and some specific applications that we've had success with. Um, also, just in case you do have questions, uh, we'll be monitoring them throughout in the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, this is a screenshot of the control panel uh, from the downloaded application. If you're using the web interface to access the content, uh, there is a similar button that you could access the questions from. You just follow down and click on the arrow and you'll be able to ask a question. There's also the chat section as well. I'll keep an eye on that, but if you could use the questions, it would be greatly appreciated as I'll be uh, watching that more closely than the chat. Okay, so let's get started. Let's talk about what you're going to learn today. So in particular, we're going to talk about what uh, a CRM and a PM tool really can do for you, or what can they do together for you? We're also going to figure out how to choose the right one for your organization. And um, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about some of our tools that we've had great experience with, some of our favorites, and then really just how do you really take full advantage of the solutions that you have, whether you have solely a project management tool or a CRM tool or both. Uh, what we want to do is show you how to take advantage of those solutions. Um, in case you're curious uh, who Profound Cloud is, so Profound Cloud, we are uh, a managed service provider and an IT consultant organization. Yes, we provide strategic guidance. Uh, we've gotten multiple awards uh, for our uh, support best practices and just our overall uh, vision on delivering customer satisfaction uh, from an IT perspective. Uh, a lot of what our solutions do is uh, provide management and monitoring of different IT processes and systems. And we're also a Google for Work partner. If you've been on uh, our other sessions, you are probably familiar with our drive as a file server methodology and also our uh, interesting take on when or when not to use Google Apps Unlimited. If you haven't seen those uh, sessions, uh, I do recommend going to our blog and uh, ch checking out some of our content. Uh, both of those have um, white papers that are adjoining. We'll also be certain to point you in that direction following uh, and make sure that you can get a copy of that if you have any questions. So we're going to talk about both CRM solutions and project management tools. But first, before we dive in uh, to project management, we want to cover uh, CRM first. So exactly how you choose a CRM application is what we're going to first dive into. So let's ask the question exactly, what is a CRM, right? So in most cases, a CRM is going to give you... Um, an online database. It's really a blank slate in many cases. Um, you can, it's when people purchase CRM solutions, there may be the uh, misperception that there's uh, you know one click and I install the application and it can do everything and manage all of my my contacts for me. Um, well, that does take some work because you really, if you want to truly take advantage of a CRM solution, you're really looking to get the most out of your contact uh, after uh, off of your customer base. Uh, and also really just provide some good reporting on how to understand and how your organization interacts with uh, different customers, prospects, etc. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about too in terms of a CRM is what is that life cycle? So they, both of these items, the, the database and just the life cycle itself really play well together. So you're, we're going to talk, a CRM solution is designed for the entire span of a customer, whether they're a prospect or an actual functioning customer. And the CRM, if 
utilized correctly, or if this is what you're looking to accomplish, is going to be able to track, monitor, not just the conversations and the historical information about the con the contact uh, and customer, but also about the investments that the customer has made or the investments you as an organization has made with that customer and identify key uh, aspects of that relationship that might require or uh, encourage an upsell or future business with either yourself or the customer in, in that relationship. Just to highlight a little bit further, uh, this is a great graphic that represents really what a CRM stands for. So you are you probably have a marketing campaign or multiple market campaigns going. And what you want to do is once you, if your campaign is are successful, you get information such as email addresses, phone numbers, names, uh, titles, locations, etc. And where do you put that information? That's really just the bare bone information that you start with. So you want to capture that information. If your marketing campaign has some call to actions to it, such as a form that says, hey, I'm interested in X product or Y service, that uh, marketing dashboard will then, you know, that form, if you will, that they are filled out should go somewhere and land somewhere. And that's where a CRM comes into play. It can actually capture that information, generate a, a lead or a contact information from uh, your marketing marketing campaigns or marketing efforts. And then it allows you to have a central location to really manage that relationship or nurture it and try to see what types of business opportunities are available there. Or if it's a disqualified or qualified opportunity. Ideally, if the if there's an opportunity there that flourishes, you can then convert it to a sale. And then once the service is actually in motion, your deployment team will work uh, or product team will work with the customer. And then your responsibility is to continue that relationship forward um, after uh, uh, it, it, they've gone from a prospect to a customer. And then there's upsell opportunities as well, and then referrals. So this is really just the full life cycle of what you would see uh, in the actual, uh, when you're monitoring and managing uh, customers as it relates to a CRM. So another question that comes up too is what isn't a CRM? Well, a CRM is not, uh, like I mentioned earlier, just something that you can download and all of a sudden um, magically monitor and manage all of your contacts. Um, we've, we had a, a podcast several months ago talking with some uh, organizations that deal with CRMs on a daily basis, such as Salesforce and Infusionsoft. And those, or, those organizations come across people all the time that has a very big misperception of what a CRM tool is supposed to do for them. They think that you purchase the application and then all of a sudden you're able to just manage your contacts and it's simple and easy. Really looking at a CRM as a database, I think that's really a very wise way of looking at uh, these types of tools because it is a blank slate and it's up to you and your processes to develop and nurture your contacts in this central location, which is a CRM. So let's talk a little bit more about why you would need a CRM. So here is an example of what life without a CRM looks like, right? So without a CRM tool, we talked about that uh, lead inbound lead happening, right? So maybe it comes in by phone or email. And then when you have that, the call, the call comes in or the email comes in, without a CRM tool, it's really you're not really certain who owns this lead, this opportunity. So it's a little confusing, do I? You know, is it my responsibility? Is it Chuck's responsibility? Is it Susan's responsibility? Where does this go? What do I do with this information? Also, if the customer is available, you know, how do I schedule what they, their needs are? What if I find out from the customer that really it shouldn't be me they should be speaking with. It should be someone else in a different product department or services department. Uh, where is that noted? How is that arranged? Where is, uh, you know, how would you schedule this information without having to go back and forth with multiple phone calls unnecessarily with different people? And where does all this, where does it get documented? Are you using loose leaf paper or are you using a spreadsheet or a Word document or a Google document to just manage all of your notes? And where does it get stored? How does that get shared? Um, and then just simple reminders. Okay, sometimes when you're dealing with prospects, they're, 
they have a very realistic need, but it might not be applicable for several months. They're just gathering information. And that's very common when people are looking for new products or services. They're just they're in the information gathering phase of this. And you're just uh, in that phase with them. So you want to know when you should be following up with them. How are you going to follow up with them? What do they prefer? Can you get something scheduled, et cetera? Without a tool to do that, you're really bouncing between four different types of uh, solutions, whether it's loose leaf paper, sticky notes, uh, some type of word processor, a calendar. Um, and there really wasn't a central place to manage that information. And that results to dollars being lost because it's very easy if you're if you're a small staff and you're getting a lot of calls, uh, information can get lost extraordinarily quickly and lost uh, leads can lead to lost dollars. Now, let's look at life with a CRM. So that same inbound calls, let's say by phone or email, will automatically be, uh, if you have a form like I talked about in your marketing campaign, or you just have a form that is pointed towards your CRM solution, that automatically is going to put, be put into a bucket within the system and automatically added to your database. So you may have a database called new leads, new et cetera. And that, that's where that information would lie. And all the information that was put in that form or all the information that was gathered in that phone call can be recorded in that one location. And in just a few clicks can be assigned to the right person person. And that contact can then, you know, you can record all the information, all the communication, notes, etc., interests, everything that you can be, then learn can then be recorded in that bucket within the CRM solution for that specific contact. A definite, and in, in addition to that too, it allows you to really formulate a process. So when the when a contact or a, a, you know, the lead first comes to you, it allows you to identify what's happening uh, with this particular particular prospect. Um, you really want to understand who this person is, what their needs are, how th your organization can help, and learn more about the strategic vision of the organization too. All oh, this is so important in a sales process and can be recorded very easily in a CRM solution. Also, you want to qualify. Look, if you have a process in place and you're recording this information, it's very possible that the person might not be a right fit for you. So, you want to record that information. So in case someone says, hey, I saw an inbound lead come from X or Y, you want to say, oh, yes, we spoke. And unfortunately, their budget didn't fit our services, et cetera. That might spawn, spin up a different conversation with your sales manager to say, well, let's let's call them back and see if there's a way that we can work with them, et cetera. And if that's all managed in, in one location, your management uh, and individual representatives, et cetera, marketing people can all can manage and monitor where things are coming from uh, rather than in multiple, multiple locations. And then lastly, the actual cr process of creating what stage they are, uh, whether they're from the identify stage, the qualify, or actually the, the proposal sent or close phase, you want to deliver documentation. A lot of uh, CRMs are actually built in with, you can use templates and create proposals and plug in actual SKUs and um, uh, different products directly from the, C the the product database that's connected to the CRM and allow you to cr generate proposals very quickly and easily. And then that is also recorded in the prospects uh, uh, bucket in the CRM as well. And then from there, all that information, very likely, uh, most CR, if not all CRMs now, have mobile accessibility to them. So if you're on the go, a customer or prospect contacts you, you can see that information on your iPhone, your Android phone, your iPad, et cetera. And being able to have that information on your fingertips is invaluable for a sales organization or a workforce just because most of the time they are on the go. They are, you know, they're not at their desk. They're, they're moving around. They're working from home. They're at hotels, et cetera. And then lastly, the actual process of converting an opportunity to, into a customer can all be automated and part of the process within a CRM as well by identifying it. And so there's great value in just managing that customer as a prospect, but from a management of a current customer as well, that, that's another process all to itself that can be that can exist in that uh, in the CRM solution as well. And they can both live together and communicate uh, for upsell opportunities, et cetera. So now we're going to talk about what to look for in a CRM. Thanks, Jason. So Michael here, and uh, just want to start off by saying that when we look at, you know, how to evaluate a CRM for your organization, I want to stress one thing above all else, which is that like so many other solutions, and especially technology solutions in business, 
there's no one size fits all answer. I think a lot of times I get the question about you know, what is the best, you know, which one do you like the best, Michael? And it's really not about which one I like the best. Um, but there are some commonalities between features that we see businesses needing at different stages of their growth. And so what we're going to focus on today is some of the features that uh, most small businesses are going to need and they're going to want to look for in their CRM. And then also continuing the conversation, what are those sort of next level features? Once maybe you have a CRM now or you're sort of just past the basics of tracking this information that Jason's talking about and maybe you have a growing sales team and you want to kind of take it to the next level what are the features you should be looking up for beyond that. So that's what we're going to cover. Okay, here are some of the must-haves. And pretty much every CRM you're going to find on the market is going to have these features. It's going to have a centralized contact database for tracking information about your prospects, customers, people on your mailing lists. Uh, you can even use it to track things like uh, people that maybe you might want to recruit to work at your company later. You can use it to track uh, vendors, partners. It's just a nice centralized contact database for the company to be able to have everything in one place. And likewise, when you have a lot of people sort of dealing with a number of contacts, there's going to be pertinent communications that go back and forth. So if Jason sent an email to someone in particular who is interested in our services, and I talk to that person later, it's useful for me to know what are the conversations that have happened between Jason and that individual. So the ability to track email communications and also to answer notes for things like phone communications is pretty central um, to just, just about any CRM that a business of any size would implement. Customizable fields are really important, and again, you'll find that uh, in just about every uh, product out there. And that's the ability to add the type of information that's pertinent to your business. So for our business, it's important for us to know things like uh, how many employees an organization has, what type of technology they use, what type of industry they're in, uh, things like that. And uh, every business is going to be slightly different. So the ability to have those customizable fields is important. And then lastly, but maybe most importantly, the ability to track sales opportunities, right, from when interest is first expressed uh, to some sort of a information gathering stage, proposal delivery stage, whatever you call it, and then through to final negotiation and close um, to make sure that you don't have a leaky funnel, right, so that um, you're able to convert those opportunities coming in to dollars at the end of the day. Beyond that, when we talk about some sort of next level features that go above and beyond just the basics uh, that at least small businesses use, these are some of the key factors that we see. So having integrated email marketing into the tool, if you uh, do email marketing today and uh, most businesses uh, that, that have a marketing strategy have some component of it that's dedicated to email marketing because it's still a very powerful channel. I know it, it really is for us. It's the best way to get the word out a lot of times. Um, you, you might have had the experience that managing a separate contact database and a separate email marketing tool can sometimes be challenging. If you use something like a MailChimp or a Constant Contact to do your uh, marketing list, but then you have a CRM that's completely disconnected from that, or maybe it's somehow synchronized with that, but it's not so perfect, the synchronization, uh, you might appreciate how useful it would be to have the email marketing integrated right in with the CRM. Uh, marketing and sales automation can be a great time saver, and this is a great thing to think about once you at the stage of growth where you have a real handle on what are the right marketing and sales processes for you to be using in order to be effective, right? And this really, the businesses that will benefit the most from this is those who have really already sort of mastered the manual way down to a science. You know, if you have something that um, your marketing and sales teams or if you, the owner, are doing it, are doing, um, but you know it's something that works, but it's just not that efficient, you can put it into a marketing and sales automation tool and it, it can automate certain tasks for you. And I'll delve into that in a moment as well in one of the products. Mobile access, this should actually probably be in the must-haves because just about everybody today uh, is very concerned about having mobile access to all their information. Um, and, uh, and again, that's becoming more standard across all of the applications. Uh, beyond that, as you grow a sales team, or even if uh, you, know, you, the owner, are not the one who's intimately involved in sales, it's going to be really important for you to be able to understand what is happening from a sales activity standpoint. And uh, getting some just key reporting on um, 
you know, how many uh, incoming opportunities are we having? At what rate are we converting those opportunities? What is our average dollar amount per sale? What does it cost us to acquire each customer? These are really key things to know if you want to build a healthy marketing and sales organization. So I'm going to talk about two CRMs, and as I said before, there's no one size fits all. Um, these are two CRMs which I in particular am somewhat fond of, but I'll say that there's a lot of other products out there that I'm also very fond of. We just simply don't have the time to cover all of them. So I'm picking two that I think are representative of uh, first a sort of starter CRM. If you're maybe at the mode where you're on spreadsheets right now, um, this is the type of CRM you might think about. And then I'm also going to cover a sort of more next level CRM. Uh, for businesses that have a growing marketing and sales team and maybe need that uh, sort of next level of functionality. So the first one I'm going to talk about is called Insightly. And a couple reasons why we like Insightly. It's inexpensive, it's easy to learn and use, it can be set up very quickly. Um, Insightly's strength is really around contact management. So if your pain points are largely around our contacts are all place and we can't track our conversations, we don't know what actions we're supposed to take next with the contact and we have, you know, uh, opportunities falling through a leaky funnel, then Insightly is very good at solving that problem. You know, Jason mentioned we're a Google for Work partner and if your company uses Google Apps, uh, Insightly is actually an especially good solution because it integrates very well with Google Apps and I'll show you some of those integrations in a moment. And as I said, this is a great what I would consider starter CRM, especially for companies that are on spreadsheets or, you know, just managing contacts in Outlook or however it might be today. All right, so Insightly basically keeps track of four key things. It keeps track of your contacts, tasks, opportunities, and also it does have some light project management features in it. So we're going to talk about project management again in a moment, but if your project management needs are fairly light, it slightly might actually be able to solve both problems for you, which is always nice. Here's an example of what an Insightly page looks like, right? Here's a prospect Nike, and you can see the contacts uh, that have been added to the organization. You can see who's talked to whom and when, what type of follow-up tasks are necessary, and basically keeps all of the information we know about this company in one place. I talked about the need to add custom fields and Insightly is very flexible in that way. I mentioned the Google for Work integrations and one of the, the key uh, parts of a CRM process within your company is being able to track those communications that are going back and forth. And different CRMs handle that differently. If you are a Google for Work, uh, if you are using Google for Work within your company, Insightly makes it really easy. They have a Gmail integration where if you want to save a particular conversation to Insightly so that others can sort of reference it, you have the option to uh, just simply click a box at the bottom of the email and that conversation is automatically logged. Similar type of integration with contacts in Insightly. So a lot of times, uh, salespeople and, and uh, or whether it's owners doing sales find it very useful to have all of their sales contacts sort of synchronized over to their mobile phone or available within their uh, email application and Insightly is able to do that and synchronize contacts back and forth uh, with the database. And then of course mobile access is always really important and Insightly has some really great mobile apps for that. In terms of pricing, and I'm going to give you very sort of broad pricing understanding just so you can understand the ballpark of what these solutions might cost. They, they each have their own sort of little add-ons and features that might cost extra or a little less, but I'm just trying to give you a sense of generally where they sit so that you can sort of get headed in the right direction in terms of cost benefit for your organization. So Insightly is fairly inexpensive. I would perceive this as being very high ROI. If you're moving off of a spreadsheet, chances are you're potentially losing opportunities, you're losing time sifting through that spreadsheet, trying to figure out, you know, who you need to call next. Um, Insightly is going to solve that problem for you. Uh, for five users, for example, it can range anywhere from $60 to $250 per month, uh, just depending upon the particular features that you need. I'm going to move on to CRM solution number two. And again, I would put this in that sort of next level of CRM for growing businesses uh, that have some established marketing and sales processes, that have started to establish a sales and marketing team, uh, and that uh, are ready to sort of take it up to the next level. 
So some of the things that, that I like about Infusionsoft is it has really strong automation. Uh, and I'll show you what that means in a second. But particularly, I find their automation to be very easy to use. Uh, you don't have to be highly technical um, to be able to set up a, a nice automated marketing campaign in Infusionsoft. Uh, and also reporting, right? At some point, um, you may outgrow the type of reporting that you get from one of those starter CRMs, which may just be basic reports, such as how much business did we close or how many opportunities did we get. Sometimes you need to dig a little bit deeper than that, and Infusionsoft uh, has some really nice reporting features. If you happen to do any e-commerce in your business, Infusionsoft has some really strong e-commerce integrations um, that can be very powerful. Now, of course, all of these great new features come with a caveat, which is uh, Infusion, something like Infusionsoft will t definitely take you more time, effort, and cost, both to implement and to maintain over the long term. But the thinking is that if you do it at the right time within your business stage of growth, that you're going to see ROI on that very quickly. And let me show you a few of the ways that we think that, that can happen. So Infusionsoft basically tracks a lot of the same things I just talked about with Insightly. But one of the really big reasons why companies move up to a solution like Infusionsoft is this idea of automation. So at some point, you're going to find yourself with your contact database growing. And it becomes very time consuming to sort of be manually going through that database, deciding who needs to be reached out to when. If you are hosting a webinar, uh, you may want to send out an invitation to everybody uh, at a certain time on a certain day. But maybe you've also got another webinar scheduled for next month that is uh, on a very similar topic to something that someone uh, subscribe to your website on a particular blog post page about, and you want to make sure that person gets the message about the rev webinar that's more relevant to them, right? So it's all about finding ways to automate to make sure that someone gets the right message uh, that is pertinent to them at the right time. And these are otherwise things that you may already be doing now manually. If you have a process now where, you know, maybe a customer purchased some, something from you and you want someone to reach out uh, two weeks later to check in with them. Um, or maybe someone, you know, goes to your website and uh, likes your Facebook page, but you want to then send them a message and, um, you know, and ask them if they're interested in more information about your product, your service, or whatever it might be. These are the types of things that can all be automated. Uh, and it's really, you know, kind of like Jason said before, it is a blank slate. So this is something that works really well if you have a process that you are confident will work in terms of marketing and sales. If you don't have a process or your process is not working, all this is going to do is help you automate a really bad marketing or sales process uh, and, and essentially help you do bad marketing faster. Um, so, uh, so this is something to consider when you're ready at that stage. One thing I really like about Infusionsoft is it does integrate the email marketing right in with the tool. So there's no more importing and exporting out of MailChimp or constantly trying to clean up or segment the database in the right way. If you want to target a specific message to a very specific group of people, as long as you have that information in Infusionsoft, um, then you can target based upon either those custom fields or any type of information you have in Infusionsoft. One thing is if you if you uh, you know if you monitor your your website closely and you and you, it's important for you to understand who's coming to your website, what types of activities are they performing. They may be uh, converting to an opportunity right in your website by filling out a form expressing that they're interested in learning more about your product or your services, and they may be signing up for a mailing list. Um, you know you may be getting some reports right now based on what is happening. Uh, the difference with Infusionsoft is it can also do that type of analytics about what's going on in your website, but Infusionsoft, because it has so much other data tied into it, can bring all of that data into one place. So if you have a starter CRM, like an Insightly or another product, and you have, say, Google Analytics, which you're getting reports for what's happening on your website, you may find that those things are disconnected. So it's difficult to take actions to say, well, when somebody subscribes to a mailing list, I'd like them to get such and such a message uh, later. Or I'd like, to, I'd like to get a report of everyone who has uh, downloaded at least two ebooks from our website. And I'd like to send that over to the salesperson uh, and schedule a task for them to, to call those people. 
you know, these are things that having the analytics integrated in with the rest of the information can help you sort of make better decisions. And then advanced reporting, like I was talking about before. This is obviously just a very basic level of what is happening in my sales pipeline that uh, most businesses are going to be concerned about. Uh, but you'd be surprised how difficult it can be to get some of this data, um, particularly when you're operating out of spreadsheets. But it gets even more complicated the more contacts that you're working with, the more sales people that are doing sales within your organization. And so um, one thing that uh, Infusionsoft can do in terms of reporting is uh, do what, what we would call closing the loop, right? So Infusionsoft will not just tell us about, you know, how many people called and how many deals we closed, but it can even tie that person back to activity uh, as it happened on your website. So if I want to know of all those people who downloaded eBooks who eventually became a customer, uh, Infusionsoft is great for answering all of those questions and really helping you measure your marketing dollar. So you'll see that Infusionsoft, and again, this is a very broad range of prices, and this would be for companies that are kind of in the three to 10 user range. If you're larger than that, um, which I know a lot of you are, it will definitely scale up from there. Uh, but this just gives you a sense of what are the entry points in terms of price, and as you can see, it is significantly more than something like an Insightly, but this is why it's important that you sort of consider this in terms of the overall ROI of a solution. Um, again, depending upon the growth stage of your business and where you're at in your marketing and sales processes, this could be a complete no-brainer in terms of ROI. Or you may find that you're not quite ready yet and you're, you're better off with a starter CRM and sort of saving the cost until you get things a little bit more flushed out. Okay, a couple keys to success to keep in mind regardless of what solution you choose. Uh, always for us, it's always about starting with the business goal, not the tool. You know, as you've heard us say a couple of times, talk about a blank slate. Uh, know what you want to accomplish before you dive into evaluating tools, because the tool is not going to do the job for you. Um, you've really got to know exactly what you want to accomplish, what outcome you're trying to achieve, and what is your strategy for getting there, in which case the tool is going to be very powerful for you. Always with these tools, with CRM tools, they're only as good as their data that you put into them. So if the information about your contacts is accurate, email addresses are accurate, um, you know, no good notes are kept on conversations, it's going to be very powerful. If the data is stale and not kept up to date, it's not going to be as useful. Pay attention when you look at CRMs and project management tools to so what types of integrations are available. Because one thing we want to avoid is the situation where, you know, you've got your email, you've got your CRM, you've got your project management, you've got your customer support tool, you've got your website, and that all of these things can very easily become very disconnected. And so we always try and look for tools that have some type of integration with existing tools that you're using. I'm going to touch on that a little bit again later as well. And then always train, 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 train. You know, I'm of the big belief that we don't want to throw technology solutions uh, at our teams and just sort of point them a link to some videos and have them figure it out, right? We want to give them as many resources as possible to be successful and really uh, give the project its full attention. Okay, I'm going to pass it back over to Jason and we're going to delve into choosing a project management tool. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. Uh, yes, is exactly. And what we're going to talk about now is thank you for uh, really getting into some of the two great tools that we uh, have experience using in terms of CRM. But now let's take a different approach here and see what, when would you need a PM tool, a project management tool. And I think what's important to know first is that a project management tool is not a CRM first and foremost. If you're working with the city of Whoville, a CRM would be good to know that you're working with Wendy Lou Who and the mayor of Whoville and the Grinch. And you want to know what kind of interactions you're having with them. And yes, also you're going to track what what is the business opportunity within the city of Whoville that you want to work with. Where a project management tool comes in is the actual project that you're working on with uh, the city of Whoville, the actual work, the systems uh, processing uh, project, whatever it may be. And that's when the project, uh, when you move away from necessary, uh, you move away from the customer relationship, nurturing and building aspect of a project, um, but the action, and then go into the actual project itself. And this includes 
both activities that require internal resources and external duties as well. So for example, you let's say you recently won the city of Whoville for the network infrastructure project. And so internally you have your process, you have all the deliverables and tasks that have been assigned to you that you want to work on. And that's really what where you need to manage and understand. But then there's also that external facing aspect of it too. What were the expectations from the customer, from the city of Whoville's perspective and what were you, ex how are you expected? What do you expected to do? So internally, you need a system that says, all right, well, here's how we plan on accomplishing these deliverables. And then you can relate back to the customer about what specifically you're looking to do and how you're going to get there. And then, of course, just like in the CRM life cycle, you have a project life cycle from start to finish. And let's dive into a little bit more about how to identify when you need a project management tool. So here is life without a project management tool. It's a little wacky. So what you have here is right when you start off the project, you need to know, okay, well, who is in charge, right? What, what, does this, what does the team even need to know? If you have a CRM tool and you don't have a project management tool, what information are you going to be delivering over to the project team once the, the opportunity is closed? Is there a document? Are there deliverables, et cetera? Um, when's the first meeting? When's the next meeting? Who am I supposed to be talking with? Where is that information? Um, is anyone taking notes? Uh, you know, during uh, the first kickoff call, you're probably going to learn a little bit more about the opportunity that maybe wasn't learned from an internal kickoff meeting with your the sales representative to the project team. You're going to find out a little bit more about who you're being working with, uh, who are the stakeholders within the project, who's going to be your main point of contact, et cetera. Where is that information going? Additionally, um, you need to schedule a follow-up. Sometimes projects can fall beside the wayside. There might be certain tasks or deliverables that are assigned externally or internally, and your people are kind of waiting. Who has the ball in which court, right? And how do you know who's supposed to be following up to get that information to you? And then the worst thing that could possibly happen is if you're not managing this project accurately, the worst thing that could happen is the customer says, hey, this is something we've already gone over. Why do I have to repeat myself? I thought that's why we went through the whole sales process to begin with. Never want that to happen. And then where's the contract? Uh, and a lot of times with when you're dealing with, when you're, if you're using a CRM tool, that proposal, the, the different deliverables and the different uh, line items are included in that are being tracked in the CRM tool. Whereas when the project is kicked off, where does that information sit and rely and where, where does it exist going forward? And then who is supposed to you know, get that information, right? Accountability is so important in projects. And again, pro accountability can be external. So it could be the actual customer's responsibility to get you information. And it also, uh, in most cases, in a lot of cases, is internal because you want to make sure that your team uh, is assigned the right tasks and deliverables. And you want to get to those milestones before the project uh, starts to creep out of uh, control in terms of uh, time frame. And then, uh, again, who, the responsibility also goes into who should be scheduling information. So let's move on into life with a project management tool. Here he is, super excited, two thumbs up, way up, because life with a PM tool is phenomenal. So right away, right, you have, schedule, you have a project handoff, right, from the uh, sales representative to the deployment team. That project lead utilizes the tool. They What they do is they use the tool. You assign the different project team members, schedule a calendar uh, invite to the team. The calendar invite to the team goes out to the external resources, the people in the, that are working at Whoville that need to be contacted or included. And then there's information that's gathered, right? So you want to make sure that you have all the contracts, uh, all the different documentation, anything that was learned throughout the sales process that is valuable to this project. There might be some catch uh, 22s. There might be some specifics of the environment that are important to this project. All that data needs to be moved into this project so that it, it can be easily accessible and known. Um, and then all the scheduling that should be occurring between the project uh, team and also the customer can all happen in, in, in you know, a nice sequential order and be tracked and managed, et cetera, within uh, the tool. 
And then the actual delivery, right? You want to be able to track and understand where are you on the contract. You said you're going to be finishing this project in X amount of days. And then within that project, there are certain deliverables. And within those deliverables, you're going to reach certain milestones. And you need a system to manage, track, and monitor how you're going to get from kickoff call to close and hand over to either support or be done with the project itself. And all of that needs to be tracked and monitored. Also, um, the best part about this is visibility, right? If you have a project management tool, you're going to be able to have all team members have access to all the information that's going on. Uh, similar to uh, in the worst case scenario when you have customers that say, hey, I already gave you this information, I've already said this before, Using, utilizing a project management tool is going to allow you to have a very transparent view to the entire project team so they can see all the information without having to ask again and again and again for information that was already given to them. And then lastly, just like the CRM tool, this uh, most project management tools, and especially the ones we're going to talk about, have mobile accessibility to them. So you're on your iPad, you're on your iPhone, your Android phone, et cetera. You're able to have access to the project. So if you're on the go and you can actually check off certain milestones or deliverables throughout, you can do that from your phone very easily. And now we're going to move over to what to look for in a project management tool. All right, thanks, Jason. So uh, just like we covered in CRM, we're going to cover starting with some of the must-haves about pretty much what you're going to want to look for in just about any project management tool. Obviously, you want to have the, the ability to create and assign project tasks to different people and track project uh, progress on those tasks. And you're going to want to track notes and communications uh, regarding the project in one place so that everybody can be in the know. And then uh, one final requirement, which I would also say is also true of CRMs too nowadays, is you really want to be looking at uh, cloud-based solutions, uh, products that uh, you access through your web browser from any internet-connected device anywhere. And most of the uh, emerging tools in the project management and the CRM space really are cloud-based. A lot of the tools that are still around that based upon installed software uh, are not what we would consider so much on the cutting edge of, uh, of what's out there. Now, a lot of the next level features when it comes to project management, maybe if you're uh, using a basic project management tool now, especially if you're in a project to project intensive business, there are some additional features that are probably going to be very important to you. Uh, you know, obviously in, a, in any kind of a service-based business or really in any business at all, uh, everyone's time is an expense to the business, right? All the employees' time. So the ability to capture that time and quantify it and understand profitability is tremendously important. So uh, some of this sort of next level project management tools will have integrated uh, time and expense tracking. Uh, the ability to send invoices and receive payments directly out of your project management tool, again, can be very beneficial, particularly for businesses who primarily uh, invoice for uh, project to project. Uh, profitability reporting, as I said before, is a really key thing. Having your, uh, your income and expenses all in the same tool as it relates to a project, uh, when everyone's time and the various expenses you may incur on a project, uh, the estimate you give the customer, whether you're billing them sort of hourly or you're billing them on a fixed fee for the project, uh, having all of that information in one place and being able to deliver reports is not always the simplest thing, uh, but there are some good next level project management tools out there that can help you do that. And similarly, forecasting, you know, and understanding a, how much money you uh, sort of expect to come into the business over the next month, three months, uh, one year, and project management tools can, uh, can help you forecast that out, usually based on, you know, business that's already closed and understanding uh, how projects lay out over time and how you're allocating your resources and determining whether or not you're, you are uh, properly staffed um, to deliver on those projects. A few other project management features that can come up. Uh, resource planning is one I just mentioned, which has to do with uh, sort of understanding how everyone's time is allocated between pro uh, future projects. Project templates can be incredibly time-saving if you have particular types of uh, services that uh, you perform over and over and over again, uh, which most businesses do. 
and uh, then a client portal. So if you're doing customer-facing projects and you want to give the customer the ability to sort of have a self-service way to see where your progress is for them to add their notes, their requests, uh, some project management tools are going to have uh, customer portals which allow you to give your customer access to that information which they may appreciate. So similarly as to how we do with CRM, I'm going to cover two project management tools. Uh, the first one is more in that realm of what I would consider a starter project management tool that would be probably a good fit if you don't have a project management tool today or if uh, your business has more modest project management needs. Um, and it's Asana. Now, two things we really love about Asana is that Asana is really fast and it's easy to use. It's not overcomplicated with a lot of extra features, but it's, it is incredibly powerful at the same time. And one of the big themes about working in Asana is about taking a lot of the communication that's currently uh, going back and forth in email throughout your organization and getting it organized into a more productive way, in a more collaborative way. Uh, Asana is a, a, a great solution to look at if you feel like your organization is on email overload and it's hard to kind of keep everyone in the loop and you've got tons and tons of reply alls going all day long. It's not, a, not always the most efficient way to communicate. So this just shows you what a basic Asana task list looks like, and it doesn't look like much. It's kind of like lined paper uh, with a bunch of notes and sections, and uh, the lines and tasks get checked off as you go. Pretty simple. But it's all the collaborative tasks behind it that really make it powerful. So if we were to look at a particular uh, task, let's say this is a, a graphic design firm and uh, one of the tasks in their client project is to get feedback for the second revision of the design, right? So there's all types of information here that's exposed to me that would be hard to get from a string of emails. Understanding who's accountable and who's responsible for a particular task, right? What is the date that this task needs to be accomplished by? What are any notes or additional things that need to be kept in mind as we work on this task? And if the task involves more than one person or involves feedback from people, having a conversation right there down below, uh, again, really beats sifting through tons and tons of email to find the information that you're looking for. One thing I really like about something like Asana is a simple feature such as task following. So sometimes you may need to be kept in the loop on a particular thing. Right, a particular task that's going on, but that rather than being, you know, BCC on every email from now to eternity, um, you could simply go to that task in Asana, hit the plus button, add yourself as a follower, or someone else can add you as a follower, and then you can receive a daily digest of all of the things that you're following, uh, and not sort of suffer from that inbox overload. So Asana also has guest access, which speaks back to that client portal idea that I talked about before, right? So it gives you the ability to invite people outside of the company into a particular project and give them certain permissions to view and change things within the project. This is useful both for customers, but it's also useful if you have uh, outside parties, whether it's vendors or contractors, that are part of the project that, uh, that you need to collaborate with. So this can be really useful. And then, of course, just like the other apps we've talked about, there's a great mobile interface that allows you to do uh, just about anything you can do on your desktop uh, on the go from your mobile device. Asana is extremely inexpensive. Uh, given what, given the, the difference that it can make for an efficiency of the organization, having a tool like this, it's uh, next to nothing. And in fact, there, there is a free uh, version of Asana as well that does a lot of the features that I just showed you. Um, there are just some certain more premium features that you uh, may want to consider getting the paid version. But even the paid version is extremely nominal, I feel, for, for, um, for the return it can offer even the smallest businesses. Now, if you're already using a project management tool and you're interested in knowing what a more next level solution might look like, uh, I would consider looking at something like Mavenlink. Now, uh, some of the reasons we like Mavenlink is it has integrated financial features, right, which Asana doesn't have. It doesn't know anything about your dollars or cents or time or how much money you're making. It really only knows what tasks need to get done, who needs to do them, things like that. They're all very important. 
Another thing we like about Mavenlink is they, they have a variety of options. So they have they do have a more entry level option that's good for small businesses, but as you grow, it's got a lot of very powerful financial options and integrations with things like uh, QuickBooks Enterprise and things like that. They're going to make it a suitable tool, not just for today, but in the future. It has really nice Google Apps integration, similar to what I talked about with Insightly, and it goes well beyond just the day to day who's doing what. Okay, so this is the day-to-day -day who's doing what, and it certainly does that well. Uh, the ability to track tasks, uh, subtasks, you know, uh, percent complete. It has additional things like you know percent completion and things like that. It can give you a little bit more feedback and information about um, what's happening on a task than say Asana does. It has integrated time and expense management, so you can set it so that as uh, people within the organization are working on tasks, they can be tracking their time against that task. And then, of course, you can report on that and understand how efficient and profitable your business is. Mavenlink has integrated invoicing. So, again, if you're largely uh, billing your customers project to project for, um, you know, for either if it's progress billing, you're billing along the way, or you're billing up front, or you're billing hourly, or you're billing all at the end. Uh, Mavenlink supports all these billing models really well. And again, be, having it all integrated right into the tool really helps make the financial reporting a lot easier. And it, it's a nice interface to give your customers uh, to be able to view their bill as well. I mentioned a moment ago the QuickBooks integration. And again, this really goes back to you know, being, being able to keep all of your information in one place is a perspective. Uh, and Maven like integrates well, its financial features integrate well with QuickBooks, which is incredibly useful. And yeah, I really like is just the ability to get this sort of broad view of where you want our project. How much did we estimate this project would cost us? How much have we actually spent, right? Whether that's spent in terms of expenses or whether it's spent in terms of people's time. Um, you know, it's just a great way to get an overall understanding of the profitability of each uh, of your business, both on the whole and also on a project by project level. And I mentioned resource allocation, which again, in a, in a project-based, project revenue-driven business, it can be incredibly challenging to sort of predict your staffing needs in the future. And a tool like Mavenlink can help you do that because it can show you in one place what are all the projects that are going on, how much time is allocated or will need to be allocated to each project by whom. And so you can see and spot any bottlenecks before they happen. And just like the other tools we mentioned, a uh, great mobile app that gives you access to most, if not all, of this functionality on mobile devices as well. To give you an idea, the, uh, the cost of Mavenlink does range based on the features that you need. Uh, they have an entry-level plan, uh, which is $19 per month for uh, five users. Uh, and then if you need the more uh, professional plan, which has the integrated financial reporting and things like that, uh, that ranges up starting at $29 per user per month. So again, uh, if, you're, if you reach a certain point in your business where, uh, where a key revenue driver is your ability to manage projects efficiently, and that's a core critical function of your business, uh, there's going to be a lot of ROI there for you. Okay, some keys to success to keep in mind when it comes to project management tools. First, I would say don't overdo it on project management features. Uh, this this is one area where, um, you know, if you, the danger is if you jump into a tool, uh, that's sort of a next level tool. Uh, in order for it to be effective, it does require you to tell it more information, right? Someone's got to input how much money we're going to make off this contract. Uh, the time has to be tracked. Uh, if you want to know percentage completion on a task by task basis, there is an overhead cost to organizing that data among your team, right? So you may not want to overwhelm your team with a tool that, does too much, right? Because at the end of the day, you don't make money by managing your projects. You make money by delivering uh, value on the project, delivering value to your customer. And you want your employees to spend as much time doing that as possible. Um, so I would not overdo it here. If something like an Asana fits your needs and you just need to keep everyone on the same page, I wouldn't overreach on project management features. Just like CRM, it's important to put process behind the tool. If you have really sound project management practices internally and you want to translate those into a tool that can help you execute 
those processes and those practices, you're going to do really well. If you're not quite sure what your project management process is, I would stop, I would get the manual process down first and then look for a tool that really supports the way that you want to operate. And then just like CRM, uh, train, 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 uh, make sure that uh, everyone gets the information they need to be successful. I mentioned earlier the idea of integration. I'm only going to touch on this very briefly. But first of all, if you're a Google Apps customer, we mentioned Google for work earlier, there are tons of integrations. And even if you just want to learn about more project management tools that integrate with Google Apps, uh, you can search for the Google Apps Marketplace. If you just type that into Google, you'll find it. And you'll find a directory of a whole host of tools that have some level of integration with the tools you're already using today. And that's a, sometimes a great place to start even evaluating tools that are beyond the, the four that we've shown you here today. Here's an example of some of the tools that we use either with our customers or internally uh, that have really strong Google Apps integrations. Now, if you are not a Google Apps user or uh, if the tool that you want to use does not integrate uh, in the way that you're looking for it to integrate, there's a great tool called Zapier out there, uh, which can be implemented with not too much technical hassle and not too, not really not too much expense. Um, but if you go to their website and look at some of the tools they support, they allow you to say, take QuickBooks and connect it with Asana or uh, take it insightly and connect it with Mavenlink. You know, so if there's integrations that are not supported by the tools natively, there are companies out there who build integrations that are uh, you can sort of make with a couple of clicks. So uh, it's a little bit abstract, but go to their website, check it out. If you're having problems in this area, Zapier might be able to help you. Great, I'm going to pass it over to Jason just to wrap it up, address any questions, and uh, take it from there. Great. Thanks, Michael. Uh, just as a reminder to everyone, this is being recorded or has been recorded, and I'll make sure that everybody that attended and registered gets a copy because uh, I know that that was, that was something that was uh, asked during a question. Um, also, I just wanted to highlight uh, if you would like to get a takeaway here, uh, just to, to show a little bit more about what it's like working with Profound Cloud. If you simply go to this link right here, uh, what you'll be able to do is get a copy of our switch from uh, dry, uh, switch to a file server, uh, sorry, to Google Drive from a file server, which is something that we've had great success with. So basically, if you're looking to go to the cloud for file storage. Uh, this is a takeaway we wanted to deliver to you guys uh, as a thank you for joining. And just to see if you might, you know, if you're in the market or if you're interested in going to uh, a cloud-based file storage solution, this is a great methodology to do so. Okay, um, are there any other questions? It doesn't look like I see any. So what I can do is I can wrap it up, give you guys all two minutes to fill up your cup of coffee before your next meeting, and I'll make sure that everyone gets a copy of the recording. Really appreciate everyone's time today, and hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you.